Hi friends, this is Yamini Sharma and I welcome you back to my channel The Saffron Box. Uh, today in this video I'm going to be talking about the upcoming solar eclipse and what is going to be the effect of this eclipse on all the 12 ascendants, the 12 signs. So before I go ahead, if, I, uh, if you are a first time visitor on my channel, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and uh, leave a like, leave, leave a comment. Uh, if you are my regular viewer, my subscriber, uh, big thanks to you and uh, I would also request you to uh, leave a comment, leave any feedback which you have. Uh, you can also mail me at the saffron uh, box at uh, gmail.com if you want to uh, book a consultation with me or a reading with me or you're interested in learning astrology as well. Right. So uh, before I go ahead. Uh, let me just uh, go over the uh, details of the solar eclipse uh, how and when is it going to happen number one uh, the eclipse is going to happen on the 10th of June 2021 and this is an annular solar eclipse meaning that the moon is not going to cover the entire uh, you know uh, uh, sun as such it will cover up the uh, middle portion and the periphery will be left out leaving a ring like disc okay which looks which actually when you you know see it on the television on the media on the uh, net etc it looks so beautiful right so it's a annular uh, solar eclipse there's going to be a ring like disc which will be visible uh, wherever it is visible so where all where all is it visible as such this solar eclipse will be visible in the uh, american continent northern america uh, canada greenland uh, part of europe russia some part of asia and in india it's not fully visible some part of it uh, will be able to some part of the country will be able to see the eclipse not fully and uh, the time of the eclipse is from 1 42 pm to 6 41 pm it's a period of almost five hours uh, on the 10th of june and as per the hindu pajang that day is a thursday it is also an amavasya tithi in the jeshta month and it also happens to be the shani jayanti okay so this is the significance of the day uh, on the of the solar eclipse and this eclipse will be taking uh, taking place in the sign of Taurus that day being an eclipse obviously we will have the Sun the moon uh, Rahu and Mercury which is going to be retrograde in motion so we'll have four planets in the sign of Taurus the eclipse takes place in the sun, in the nakshatra of Mrikshira which is a Mars owned nakshatra and let me tell you that Mars, the ruler of Mrikshira, where the eclipse is going to take place, is debilitated in the sign of Cancer. So I've already made a video on what is the effect of the debilitation of Mars on all the 12 signs. Uh, I've put in a card here and there's a link in the description box as well. So you can go check it out. Now, uh, if we have to see a few more things about the eclipse as such, uh, see it's a solar eclipse. It is taking place in a fixed sign of Taurus and uh, Rahu Ketu axis obviously is there. Uh, there is going to be an effect over there. Uh, at this time when the eclipse is going to be taking place, Mercury is retrograde as well. Okay, And there is an exchange of Mercury and uh, Venus as such. Saturn is also retrograde in motion. So, uh, you know there is going to be an effect of uh, changes you know extreme changes sometimes solar eclipses or lunar eclipses for that matter are not something to be feared about that is something which i always repeat they are not to be feared about they're basically chances or uh, i would say uh, trigger points which build up chances to initiate change okay so uh, whatever you want to do the way you want to go ahead sometimes you know these are trigger points where you can actually decide where to go if you are at a y junction sometimes you get you know you are able to see both the 
directions very clearly and you are able to follow whatever you really have to follow. So this clarity after the eclipse and the effect of the eclipse anyways lasts for a few months to be uh, there. Right. So uh, what happens is uh, whenever wherever the eclipse is happening in your chart, you know, so you'll have to see the sign of Taurus. Uh, see the check the sign of Taurus wherever it falls in your chart you will see uh, effects around that. Also, uh, see the ruler of Mrikshara, that is Mars. Where is it falling? Where is it? Where is it affecting? So Mars is anyways in the sign of Cancer. Okay. And uh, if you have uh, a Taurus ascendant, Taurus rising, a Scorpio rising or a Cancer rising or a Leo rising for that matter, Obviously, the effect of the eclipse is uh, quite pronounced or you feel it a little more or if you're undergoing a dasha of sun or moon uh, or Mars for that matter, uh, Rahu for that matter, you are going to feel the effect a little more, a little more pronounced. So, of course, the background is always the dasha, the mahadasha which you're undergoing as well. So, uh, if, you, uh, if we have to look over the uh, or the or understand the effect of the uh, eclipse on all the 12 signs the 12 ascendants i'll begin with the sign of aries so for aries you see uh, this eclipse is happening in the uh, second house of your birth chart so the second house of your family of your wealth of your resources and uh, what does this eclipse do over here the uh, this brings in changes regarding uh, you know your wealth or your resources either you want to control your resources now Rahu is also there you want to exercise control over the wealth over the family money over the resources which you have at hand or there could be circumstances where the control just goes you know there are certain flip-flop changes which happen regarding your wealth regarding your money family money I'm talking about okay uh, you could also uh, feel that some stability is required you know you could feel a little insecure about your money so maybe you start looking at new avenues to uh, earn money or to invest money but this is a time where you should be very careful regarding investments regarding money matters okay some of you uh, now depending on the background of your dasha some of you could also land into big money as i said uh, eclipses bring in some kind of you know extreme energy so there could be some major decision regarding money or regarding your family as well or uh, you could land into uh, some big money from your family side there could be an inheritance also which we might be talking about here right then uh, we move on to the next sign of uh, Taurus so if you have a Taurus rising or in fact even a Taurus moon uh, the eclipse is happening in the sign of Taurus so as I said you are going to be one of the most affected ones as such and what does this affect for you? This affects yourself, your personality as such, your appearance as such. So some of you might start getting, uh, you know, very uh, careful or very conscious about how your appearance is, how you look, uh, how are you uh, going out, uh, how are people perceiving you, okay? So that could be... You know one of uh, a major uh, focus areas you might start channelizing your energies towards actually looking good and looking more presentable or making some major changes regarding your appearance as well that could be one of the uh, you know fallouts of the or the repercussions after the eclipse then uh, some of you might also uh, you know look at a new direction in life as in you, you know you redo your plans you start uh, planning for the future you change course now at this point in time it is very very important to keep the communication lines open 
keep the communication lines open with people around you be receptive to new ideas that is very very important for taurus ascendant because uh, you know uh, you might just uh, you know just listen to yourself and sometimes when we are looking at big major decisions or changing the course of our lives or doing something big in our lives we need a lot of inputs we need a lot of help from the environment help from people around us from our family and i think that is something which one has to be open to leave the rigidity out uh, leave the inflexibility out and be flexible be more receptive towards new ideas also this is a time to take care of your health if you have any ongoing health issue i think this is a time to uh, keep a check on your health and uh, be very cautious over there be very uh, careful about the food intake uh, which you have as well this eclipse because it is affecting your 7th house also directly uh, could also have some uh, effects on your marital life so either you or your partner uh they could be some uh, discords or they could be some disagreement over some issue or they could be some emotional disturbances between you and your partner so be uh, a little uh, watchful towards any kind of uh, emotional issues emotional disturbances in your marriage so uh you know be mindful of that and try to keep away from any issues keep away from any instances where uh, such issues get triggered then we move on to the next sign of gemini so for gemini this eclipse is taking place in the 12th house 12th house of expenditure 12th house of foreign lands of uh, going away releasing your energy okay so here uh there is also an exchange of the you know of the of venus and mercury so the 12th uh, lord and your lagnesha anyways in an exchange as well so there are very high chances that there could be some amount of travel which comes up or uh you know you make connections with some foreign uh, people or some foreign element comes into your life right so those of you who are maybe looking at some travel plans uh something could uh, materialize after the uh, eclipse occurs so your travel might fructify uh if you were looking at uh, ending something now it could be a relationship it could be uh any particular chapter in your life you know you could be just looking at uh finishing or winding up a business or finishing a job maybe stepping on to something new making a new beginning this could be a time where this kind of energy triggers in also uh, this is a time to uh, concentrate more towards your spiritual health uh, look after your thoughts go into introspection uh, look after how you are uh, you know releasing your energy where are you frittering away your energy rather so look after your mental health look after your spiritual health meditate if required that will be a really good time and especially on the day of the solar eclipse it will be a really good remedy also to uh, take care of the energies of the solar eclipse okay then now uh, we move on to the next sign of uh, cancer now for cancer you see your lagnesh is directly involved in the eclipse and this eclipse is happening in your 11th house there is an exchange between the 11th and the 12th lords also so mercury and venus are in exchange as well now here uh, your uh, focus could be uh, your desires there might be something which is uh, long pending which you wanted to uh, really you know realize you've been waiting for a very long time and now you see some traction so now you get to know whether what you wanted to do is going to come your way or not so some major change regarding your long term desire could take place okay this is also uh, a time to uh, you know you know look after your friend circle your social circle because some of you uh, might be meeting new people in your social circle and uh, finishing off old relationships also 
uh, letting go of uh, connections which are no longer serving you so it's like you know as i say uh, you know pruning out your contact list really seeing who's there for you and who's not so maybe you know redoing your social circle meeting new people uh, being receptive towards uh, new ideas uh, these kind of things could actually occur and this is a period of change okay so when we are talking about your long term desires when we are talking about your uh, social circle your networking etc it brings about a lot of change so new connections come in and uh, this could also be your time to uh, focus on your relationship with your elder sibling so there could be chances that your elder sibling requires your attention requires your support and uh, be available for your elder sibling as well then uh, we move on to the next uh, sign of leo now for leo uh, the lagnesh again is involved in the solar eclipse it is a solar eclipse sun is directly involved here so here the uh, eclipse is happening in the 10th house the karm sthan a very very important house with this eclipse is taking place and you have sun moon rahu mercury retrograde in motion mercury is your 11th lord also mercury is your uh, second lord also so your dhanesh your labhesh you know so uh, 10th house is fully activated and there could be uh, changes which it indicates towards your profession towards your career what kind of work you do uh, what kind of initiatives are you taking how are you growing in your profession how are you growing in your work there could be changes here now when i talk about changes changes could be that uh, you know you uh, maybe start looking out for a new a uh, profile uh, there there could be a change of department change of organization or change in your reporting channel bosses change okay so people up in your hierarchy uh, they change so uh, things like that could happen then this is also a time where you should take uh, care of your father's health uh, if your father is in that age bracket where he requires attention uh, take care of your father uh, take care of uh, you know father like figures elders in the family you know you need to be taking care of that uh, this could also uh, be a challenging time in terms of your self confidence so while an eclipse is taking place over here make sure that your self confidence does not dip down okay so maintain your self confidence keep faith in yourself as long as you are on the right path as long as you are doing your karma well uh, generating good karma and staying away from negative karma negative thoughts i think this is a time when you should actually concentrate on yourself and make sure that uh, you know you are uh, self confident you are not losing confidence here there could also be chances of changes in residence okay so uh, maybe triggered by a job change so you move to a new location you move to a new city there could be chances of that happening as well now we move on to the next sign of virgo now for virgo this eclipse takes place in the 9th house 9th house of your bhagyasthan ninth house of luck of fortune of uh, long term travels higher education so here uh, those of you who are uh, you know looking forward to higher learning opportunities higher education opportunities there could be changes here there could be uh, changes which make you decide on what to do uh, you come across something concrete after some time after the eclipse then uh if you have any uh, you know challenges in terms of uh, your relationship with your father i think this is a time where things could change okay so how they change whether for the good or the bad depends on your natal chart but things could change over here and uh, you become more uh, focused towards your uh, thinking towards your higher order thinking towards your wisdom uh whom are you seeking advice from whom are you taking guidance from that becomes very important over here so make sure that when you seek guidance when you take help 
uh, you take it uh, from uh, somebody who's going to be there for you somebody who's going to be who's really reliable who's really trustworthy okay this period could also make you question or you know have a lot of questions in your mind regarding religion philosophy governance all those things so you could be mentally involved over these issues as well then uh, this could also trigger in some journeys okay so those of you again who are looking for some long term journey overseas travel there could be a chance where such travel could take place or you get some uh, direction at least as to when the when the travel is going to take place then we move on to the uh, next sign of uh, libra now for libra this uh, eclipse takes care in a trig bhava in the 8th house 8th house of sudden changes 8th house of accidents of uh, transformation okay uh, upheaval you know so 8th house is difficult to judge as such okay so here when the eclipse takes place uh, your lagnesh is also you know this house is owned by your lagnesh it is in the 9th and there's an exchange between mercury and uh, uh, venus as such so here you might look at uh, transforming in some way or the other you might look at uh, you know things could happen which change your thinking towards life which change your thinking towards how things are happening around you you react differently you react uh, differently towards uh your family members you change your reactions sometimes you know you could be in situations where you realize that you know reacting in this particular way which i had been reacting maybe doesn't serve the purpose okay so transformation in terms of reactions towards uh, family members towards your spouse spouses family okay uh, big ticket decisions you might uh, feel like taking regarding money Uh, regarding inherited money uh, money which has come in suddenly from somewhere and some of you would actually step into chances where you gain uh, you know sudden money so it could be money from inheritance uh, there could be some loss in the family which ultimately translates into inheritance for you so this is a mixed uh, result you know some loss uh, some gain but changes big changes because whenever solar eclipses happen uh you know these kind of changes do trigger in and over a period of the next few weeks or months they show colors they show effect so here uh, this you know you could use this time to actually know yourself better change yourself towards the better concentrate more on your uh, familial uh, relationships that is very important because that is going to be the focus in the coming few weeks in the coming few months as well then uh, we move on to the next uh, sign of scorpio now scorpio is again one of the signs where the effect is going to be uh, pretty pronounced because uh, scorpio uh, scorpio's lord mars is under debilitation uh, this uh, eclipse is happening in the nakshatra of mrikshira which is owned by uh, mars as such and it is happening in the 7th house of your marriage partnerships relationships other people as such so here uh, this could be a chance to either build or break relationships so if some relationship is going well try to put in more efforts towards building it up okay this could also be a time to release energy let go of any relationship which is not serving you well so concentrate on the good uh, relationships concentrate on the good partnership which you have and it will be a perfect time to cut off any a uh, partnership or to cut off any alliance which you don't need or which uh, no longer positively serves you as well but this could be a time of a uh, challenge for married couples because uh, there could be emotional upheavals over here so moon is involved sun is involved uh you know your uh, rahu and mercury there are four planets which are anyways around here there could be miscommunication misunderstandings between a married couple so if you have a scorpio ascendant be you know be very very sure about how you are communicating with your spouse uh make sure that you are uh, 
maintaining work life balance as well you're concentrating on your marriage and your personal life as much as you are on your work life so there could be a little challenges here which you'll need to manage and uh, you may also see that uh, you know sometimes some kind of an emotional healing is required so uh, you know whether it is through meditation whether it is through other you know means of uh, channelizing your energy properly or healing yourself emotionally please try and do that because when it comes to relationships when we are handling so many relationships uh, something or the other which is disturbing you could come into the foray could come into the front and you require to you know you are you are required to heal it up you are required to let go of some old energies so this is a time when you have to concentrate on such things as well then we move on to the next sign of sagittarius or dhanu so for sagittarius this eclipse happens in the 6th house 6th house which is a ripubha which is a dustana uh, which rules over your deaths diseases enemies so here uh, your health as well your daily routine as well this is a time to concentrate on your health make sure that you don't over exert yourself four planets there you could feel that you can achieve a lot and time is less let's go on full throttle but uh, i think it's time to you know uh, understand that there is a pace which you need to follow consistently rather than you know just uh, going on and you know uh, using up your energy in one go uh, go on consistently go on you know with a lot of perseverance and persistent efforts is what uh, is going to help you out so uh make sure that your you you work towards your health good health uh good uh, diet good exercise and uh you do not bite more than what you can chew work wise this is also a time to take care of your subordinates so make sure that your relationships with your subordinates are okay you might have to let go of some subordinates also now that depends on the kind of work which you do so there could be some loss of some subordinate you know you uh, let go of a subordinate or you maybe you know cut uh, cost somewhere so uh, there could be some loss uh, which is indicated over there right so this is also a time to concentrate on your children so your children's education uh, how are they spending their time what are they doing this is a time to take interest in your children's activities as well so this is in short you are required to use your energies at various places don't over exert yourself otherwise you'll feel burnt out and then it will be difficult on your health as well then we move on to the next sign of capricorn now for capricorn this eclipse takes place in the 5th house 5th house of uh, children your progeny Uh, love entertainment romance expression of creativity right so mantra shakti now here with the eclipse there could be uh, some ups and downs which you might feel on how you're handling your uh, you know romantic affairs how you're managing things around you fifth house is also the management of things around you how you use your creativity to tackle issues around you so you could see some ups and downs you could uh, be compelled to take some decisions which you may not like and uh, this is also a time to stay away from some speculative business fifth house is also the house of speculation so any kind of speculative activity if you feel like indulging in i would request you i would advise you to stay away from it for some more time okay so stay away or wait it out because this is a very risky period so i'm not saying it's good or bad but there's a high amount of risk whenever an eclipse is occurring here so concentrate on your children concentrate on your creativity how you express yourself how if you are into any kind of a creative work this is also a time to make changes over there and uh, time to indulge in new activities time to use your intelligence in learning something new and you some of you might actually start enrolling in uh, some new courses or uh, upgrading your skill sets over a period of the next few months then uh, we move on to the next sign of aquarius 
Now for Aquarius, this uh, eclipse occurs in the fourth house. Fourth house, which is the Sukhsthan, the house of comforts, the house of uh, contentment, happiness, the house which rules your mother, uh, motherly love, affection. Now here, uh, if you see, uh, when the eclipse uh, takes place, uh, we have four planets as well. Sun, Moon, Rahu, uh, Mercury, which is retrograde in motion. Uh, you might uh, seek a lot of comfort, a lot of luxury, peace, but uh, there could be chances that you're not able to achieve it, you know. So you have this internal urge uh, to be at peace, to just remain contented, but something or the other at your home, on the domestic front, could go topsy-turvy, could disturb this, could... Uh, make you you know uh, be denied of this uh, pleasures of home pleasures of domestic happiness so this is uh, something which you need to be careful about and uh, this is also a time where some of you might look at changes changes in your house changes in your house settings or a change of residence also okay those of you who are in a challenging relationship with their, with their mother or uh, the mother is going through some kind of health issue also need to be careful. So pay attention towards your mother's health. Pay attention towards the domestic front. You may not feel as satisfied as you want to be but uh, you'll have to continuously make efforts towards your uh, domestic life, your family life, contribute towards your uh, home matters as well. Okay. Then uh, we move on to the next sign and the last sign of Pisces. Now for Pisces, this eclipse takes place in your third house. Third house of uh, short term journeys, of your initiative, efforts, communication of your siblings. Uh, this could bring about uh, changes uh, with your relationship. Your sibling, your, your younger sibling might demand attention. There could be changes over there. Uh, there could be changes in the way you need to communicate. So you might be communicating in a fashion which you might have to change. You might have to adapt to a new way of communication, to, new, to a new way of communicating your ideas to other people. So uh, time to be adaptive, to change, time to be open, receptive to change. And uh, this is also a time where you could uh, take some initiative, you know, feel very courageous and determined about uh, making any changes around you or uh, taking up new initiatives uh, as such. So make sure that whatever you do, it's well thought out. Third house is also your subconscious mind. Uh, make sure that whatever you are deciding to do, uh, you, dis you know, you think over it, you take your time, avoid the period of the eclipse, avoid this whole month uh, for taking any long term decisions as such. And uh, then when you go ahead, communicate, communicate your ideas uh, with people who are concerned about, who are connected to it and discuss your ideas, air out your ideas. Uh, this could also um, be a time for some of you to start traveling. So as things are opening up, as you depend on which part of the world you are, which country are you in, some of you might start taking up travels. Uh, there could also be a chance that you, uh, you know, get involved with some media related work. So a lot of people here, Pisces Ascendant, could actually start being very active on social media or, uh, you know, make decisions regarding their social media uh, platforms. So either you become very active or you kind of disconnect sometimes uh, when it comes to communication with people at large. So uh, eclipses bring about changes, as I said. So either you become very, very active or you just go passive and start concentrating on other things, start you know, you know, taking initiative towards other things in life. This is also a period to take care of your father's health, of your mother's health as well. Okay, so there's a connection of the third and the fourth lord. Uh, there's an aspect on the ninth house as well. So there is a need to take care of your parents, uh, make sure that you do that and take care of yourself, take care of yourself while you're traveling as well. So that was about the 
effect of the solar eclipse on all the 12 signs, the 12 ascendants. Uh, do get in touch with me if you are looking at a personal reading or if you're looking at anything related to astrology, whether learning or a personal reading or uh, discussing things in general as such. Thank you so much. God bless and uh, stay safe, stay healthy.